Welcome to the Sea Institute at the Sustainable City in Dubai. Sea Institute isn't just a building, it's a pioneer in sustainability. It's on a mission to achieve net zero by 2030, a goal which includes both net zero operational emissions and net zero embodied emissions. Join me on this tour to learn how Sea Institute will achieve this. Every feature is designed for maximum efficiency. Take the windows for example. They are equipped with special coatings to block out solar heat while keeping the inside cool, reducing the need for air conditioning. Inside, intelligent lighting systems which automatically adjust based on the amount of sunlight or whether someone is in the room, ensuring that energy is only used when needed. This is just the start. From the biogas plant to the absorption chiller, Sea Institute is a hub of cutting edge and energy saving technology. Of course, the star of the show is the solar energy system. Sea Institute has nearly one megawatt peak of solar panels installed at its rooftop and car parks. This system generates three times the amount of energy consumed by the building. On the car parks, the bifacial solar panels capture sunlight from both sides, absorbing direct and reflected light. This optimizes efficiency and offers better performance even in bad weather. These panels generate 1.6 million kilowatt hours of clean energy each year. And they don't just power the building, they also offset emissions from food, water, commuting, and waste. Here's what sets the Institute apart. The team is not only aiming to achieve net zero operational emissions, but also net zero embodied emissions. This means Sea Institute isn't only reducing the energy it uses, but also addressing the emissions associated with building materials and construction processes. This building is one of the first in the region to take such an approach. By 2030, this building will achieve net zero, not only in its energy use, but also in its entire process that brought the building to life. How will they do this? The design team has optimized structural systems, chosen low-carbon concrete, and used lightweight facades and materials with recycled content. These steps have minimized the embodied emissions. In fact, the total embodied emissions for the Sea Institute have been calculated at 3,300 tons of CO2. But here's the key these emissions will be fully offset by solar energy generated on site, all by 2030. So by the time 2030 arrives, Sea Institute wouldn't just be net zero in its operations, it will be net zero in every sense, demonstrating that sustainable buildings can be built smarter and more responsibly from the ground up. This is where sustainability isn't just a goal, but a reality in every aspect. Your building bricks carry a hidden weight, a weight you never see, but one that heavily impacts our environment. When we think of emissions from buildings, our mind often jumps to the energy used, how to cut it down, how to make it cleaner and greener. But there is another part of this story, a part that is often overlooked, and that's what we call embodied emissions. What are embodied emissions? Think of them as the invisible footprint left by the materials and the processes that go into constructing a building. From the extraction of raw materials to their production, transport, and even construction itself, each step adds up. It's like every brick, beam, and window carries its own CO2 backpack and they all pile up. Currently, the best practice caps these emissions at 500 kilograms of CO2 per square meter of built-up area. This number isn't just a random figure. It's a benchmark, a guide that helps project teams make a smarter choices about materials, design, and construction. Concrete holds our buildings, but also holds a secret. It's one of the largest sources of embodied emissions in buildings and infrastructures. 
Sea Institute decided to change that, making concrete part of the solution and not just the problem. They started by rethinking the very foundation of their building. Instead of using traditional concrete, they used low-carbon concrete, which contains 60% GGBS, a byproduct of the steel industry. And by that, they slashed the carbon emissions significantly. This simple switch made a big difference. But they did not stop there. They took a step further by optimizing their structural systems. With advanced software, they reduced the amount of concrete and rebar needed in key structural elements. This meant using fewer materials, lowering emissions, and cutting costs all at the same time. When it came to steel, Sea Institute used rebar with 97% recycled content. And finally, they focused on sourcing materials locally. By doing this, they minimized the emissions from transporting these materials. All these measures are key to making Sea Institute net zero carbon by 2030, starting with reducing upfront embodied emissions.